questions to discuss, to choose a few questions. And the question was, is the church the family of God? The second question was, can we practice being good members of God's family if we do not fellowship with God's other children? In other words, a person that doesn't like to fellowship, for example. Can we practice, um, are care groups important for learning to become good family members? Care group, for instance, is a care group of every the care of each other. And now I want you all to look at, to, to look to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, we will go. And reads as follows. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, because the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church and its savior. Therefore, just as a church family is subject to Christ, so let wives be subjected to their own husbands in everything. Subject to their own husbands in what? Everything. One of the reasons that many marriages they don't hold in the society we live is because of this. Women, they fight for equal people that uh, in certain ways is not bad, it's not that it's incor incorrect some of the aspects that a woman <coughs> fights for equal people. But in many aspects, in many cases, uh, the woman fights for equal people in a way that, for example, when judges to marriage, it's not able to understand that her place in the marriage is under the submission of the husband. As the husband is submitted to Christ, or the church, for example, is submitted to Christ. That's why the book of Ephesians, inspired by the Holy Spirit, written by the Apostle Paul, he says, Wives, submit to your own husbands, as to the Lord, because the husband is the head of the wife. Many wives can submit to a pastor, but they are not able to submit to a husband. Many wives can hear the voice of God to a pastor, but they are not able to hear the voice of God to the husband. Of course, in many cases, the husband is also somebody that doesn't play the role, the exact role in the marriage, which is also his position of the head of the family. Some, they don't have that. Therefore, just as the church family is subject to Christ, so let wives be subjected to their own husbands in everything. Now, more questions to discuss. Should men then to submit to Jesus the same way as wives to their, to their husbands? Yes. It is possible that men should be the saviors of their wives, take great care of them, just as Jesus is the savior of the church. The man cannot be the savior of the wife, but the, the man can be the agent of salvation of the wife. In other words, if the man plays the role in the marriage of preaching to the wife, discipleship the wife, back the wife with the word of God, with prayer, push the wife to a life with Christ, then the wife will be immediately in hand <coughs> salvation through Jesus Christ and of course only through Jesus Christ. The husband can be like a Lord. It is okay for a wife to disobey his honor or walk away from her husband if he is not treating her well. It's okay, yes or no? Huh? No. And that's why when we manage, we manage for life. When we manage, it's to avoid at all costs divorce. The reasons that people come to Riman or God every time is to church or any other church, and sometimes, for example, in a place like this, it looks like for many, they find, or you find so many difficulties to manage because I have this, not because you find, but because I have this already. Oh, so for us to manage, it's a difficult mess. It's very difficult. No, it's, it can be difficult because you need to make sure that you are doing, doing the right step. You need to make sure that it's the right person that you are choosing. For example, in the case of the man and the woman, both of them must have the same purpose. Both of them must have the same vision. Both of them they must have or wish us, they must desire the same life eventually, better than life 
the same Christian life. The reason that even in many uh, Christian marriages there is many frustrations is because one is pulling to one side and the other is pulling to the other side. It's not enough just marriage because I love Jesus and you also love Jesus. No, because if, if, if it was not the case, the, the world wouldn't have any problems. But the problem is when people manage and they manage just because of that and they are not able to sit down, for example, and understand each other. So if you have a man that wants to be a missionary and travel the world, around the world, and uh, preach to, to the nations, but then the wife just wants to sit in the church listening to the word of God. When it comes the time that the man is ahead of the family say, look here, we need to travel the world. The Lord is telling me that we now in, in, it's a time and the season and the stage of our lives to go and preach to the nations. The woman will say, no. Because the woman wants to be a church scholar and the man wants to be a missionary. And that brother, I think it's Julio, if you can stand up there or sit next to her, you can stand it up with the shape. And I beg you, please, church, I beg you, don't sleep in my sermons. I beg you, please, I beg you. Please, don't sleep in my sermons. Please, please. You feel that you are tired of sleeping. Watch the time, stand up with me. I beg you, please, please. <coughs> So as I said, as I said, the men have a vision and the desire to be a missionary, go to the nations to preach, do the missionary work, in the Iman, like here, for example. But then the woman just wants to be a church goer. For her, that's Christianity. For her, that's enough. That's fulfilling the mission. In her understanding. The husband say, let's go to the missionary field. The Lord is calling us. She will say, no. The same applies to the wife. The wife can have the wish and desire to be missionary, for example, but the husband wants to be a church girl. Then the situation can be even worse. Why? Because the wife then is going to be very frustrated because eventually she will not fulfill the plan of God for her. How fast are the two to you? Did you and Philippe spoke about it? Yes, we spoke about it. Before marriage, we spoke about it. Very clear. Both of us, we found out that we wanted to be missionaries. Both of us, we found out that. No matter where God sends us, we will go. Both of us, we find out that we have no place to lean our heads and sleep. Both of us, we find out that no matter how we do, live as much as we live under God's will. Both, both of us, we discover that. None of us come with a speech, and you see all our lives. Any of us came with a speech that I need to settle down. I need to have a place to stay. I, I cannot leave my country, my sacredness, especially now, for example, that we have too much speech. No, never we came with a speech like that. That will bring what? That will bring forth that then you have understanding with your wife and she will have with you. Because both of you have the same mission, same vision, same understanding. And that's why even in many Christian marriages we find that the people don't get along. Why? Because one is pulling to one side, the other is pulling to another side. And then coming to the church doesn't work. And then the prayer doesn't work. Because then there is already something that is not flashing. So that's why we advise the people to pray before, to, to fast before. To speak with a person before, in order for God to show you. And these signs are clearly already God telling you or telling you, or telling the woman or telling the man, saying, Look here, this is that this person does, it is the description of the person that you need to get married, especially for the man, because the man will be always the hand of the girl. But if there is no this sort of research, you can have very problems. So here is the same. God, the, the man must be submitted to God. And we are bringing the analogy of the wife and the husband. The man must be submitted to God. So when God said to the man to do something, if the man doesn't do, then there is a problem. And then the problem is also that many times we men, God tells us to do things and we don't want. And we forget, like many times they say, that the will of God is always the opposite of our will. God tells you to stay, but you want to go. God tells you to go, but you want to stay. God tells you to do what you don't want to do. Because most of the things that God asks us to do, usually we don't want to do. But because we are used to this uh, frenetic routine of church going, sitting and hearing, and a nice sermon, nice preaching, I give a little bit of money to church, like I say many times, we hear a bit of music, I'm fine with that, this is fine. But we forget the level of responsibility that God lay down in the shoulders of those that are called. And then chosen. Many are called 
and then just a few months, chosen. Because as you are called, God calls you and you choose yourself. God chose you because you choose yourself. Isaiah was in the temple praying, and he was in such an uh, uh, interaction with God that he could hear actually the Spirit of God speaking with God, the Father and the Son. He could hear the three of them speaking to send to send people, to send people to, the, to his people. And what is like, as I said, here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. Did God choose Isaiah? Yes, but why choose Isaiah? Because Isaiah chose himself first. So it's not about how God has to choose me. He will choose you if you choose yourself. For the life he wants to choose you. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry if you bring some sort of disappointment and you are still waiting on God is going to choose me for some area to fulfill some activity to be somewhere. If you don't choose yourself, I'm sorry. Who wants to go here and there? I went to Australia with 25 years old to do missionary work myself, single. They asked, Juan, you want to go to Australia? Yes, I send you the name. I go. Did they choose me? No, they asked me if I want. So they just saw my qualifications. I have none, but okay. This guy speaks English, he can uh, work, he's young, this and that, or this is the five. That is not that if attached to him, he can go. So they asked, Do you want to go? Who chooses? I chose myself. I said, I want to go. Amen. Tomorrow can have the, you can have the opportunity. Eventually, somebody says, Oh, you want to go there? But sometimes you want to go to the places that are really nice. But what if? God wants to send you to a place that the food is not that much, that the clothing also is not that much, that the quality of life is not that much, that the, the ministry is struggling that much. I passed through that already. <coughs> then, you, then, then is when the DNA of God will appear in your life, or not. When we are short of comfort, short of ourselves, short of the things that makes us Christians, the things that we call blessings. Ephesians 5, 25 to 33, the same book of Ephesians, chapter 5, 25 to 33 says, Husbands, also you husbands, not just the wives, you husbands, in your case, the Apostle Paul writes, inspired by the Spirit of God, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for that, that he might sanctify and clean her with the washing with water by the word, so that he might present give herself to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their wives as they walk in their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh. And the Bible says what? That the, the husband and the wife go together, there will be one single flesh. The body of the woman is from the man, belongs to man, the, the body of man belongs to the woman. But none, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord feeds and cherishes the church, for we are all parts of his body, parts of his flesh and bones. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Amen? Amen. Two notes of warning are needed here. Two notes of warning are needed here. Please, never, 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 never tell your spouse that he or she is not obeying what the Bible teaches for him or her behavior in your home. Never. Or force her or force him to do as the Bible says. Let God speak to you and you obey that in your relationship with your in other words, we, we cannot depend on each other the relationship with God. In other words, the wife cannot depend in the husband for the relationship with God, and the husband cannot depend in the wife for the relationship with God. 
the wife must know the word of God. That is, yes, it's part of the responsibility is for the husband, but the husband also must know the word of God. You know, that when that, when something comes, we don't need to be throwing stones to each other because the Bible says this, the Bible says that. The Bible in the temple, in the temple, must be to gain an understanding together. Both must understand each other. Both, both they must understand the Bible and each other. Let God speak to you and you obey that in your relationship with your spouse. God will speak to you concerning your relationship with your wife or with your husband in the text. Men tend to not listen well to their wives when they give them a warning that does not appear to originate from logic, observation, or thinking. Let me repeat this one because it's good. Men, all men, I'm included, I'm telling you right now, we tend to not listen well to our wives when they give them, when they give us a warning that does not appear to originate from logic, observation, and thinking. Why? Because we men, women are what? Are emotion, more than men. Men we are what? Men we are logic. Okay? For us to put, to, to, to if, you, if you receive even a visitor from outside, to put a glass of water here, for a visitor, for us, it's a glass washed, of course, with, with something like that. There is a glass of water, finish the glass. Let's don't speak about the water. <laughs> important visitor, yeah, glass of water, finish. For the woman, because it's a visitor, maybe you're going to put something here, and maybe, huh? maybe a, a ribbon, no. something, a cover, something, maybe a, a, a biblical verse you don't need it, or you know, something like that. Because they are emotional. So many times our wives, many times we say, can we think that for me doesn't, doesn't go nothing without the things that I've seen? I've seen, I've seen the things in the square completely. But she's seeing the things in the deeper square. Because they, they, the woman can be more spiritual than us. So she can see the things in a deep way that I don't see. Yet I'm the head. So if I'm the head, what is the way? Huh? Huh? The neck. She makes us move and look to the right place many times. Because sometimes we are not looking to the right place. In my case, my wife many times have to really force me to look to the right place. Yeah. It is what it is. So we tend to not listen to our wives, and we should. Their feelings often provide the way for accurate early warning that men should consider carefully and prayerfully. That's why. We hear many times people say what? That they have a sixth sense. Woman, eh? They have a sixth sense. Another question to discuss. Do you and me notice that Jesus in, a, in a relation to the church is compared to a man with his wife? In other words, if Jesus gave his life for the church, it means that men, the husbands, they should be always ready to give or to lay down his life for the wife. But physical death, Pastor, yeah, eventually. But when it speaks about death in a marriage, mainly is that we are able to refuse our pride, ourselves, in order that the marriage can pass. Now, this is just in the marriage now, it's also in the relationships. Yesterday I had a harsh meeting with a group from a house of demand. And uh, this, this is what we need to learn from that meeting, those that were in that meeting, for example. What we need to learn here and from that meeting. That even with the relationship with each other, we must be able to renounce ourselves for the other to, to grow, for the other to move. And sometimes we are not ready to do that. If we are not ready to do with ourselves, we, are, we won't be ready to have a relationship with a woman or with a man. But then if we are not able to relationship with each other, how we will have a relationship with God? Amen. Because each other we see ourselves. And sometimes it's very difficult for us to apologize. Sometimes it's very difficult for us to forgive. Somebody can come in and ask you for forgiveness and immediately always is always asking for forgiveness from the same spouse. Which if you ask for forgiveness. As, 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 as myself, I did. I can fail whatever I fail. If I ask you for forgiveness for the same stuff 50 times, it 
If you complain about it, you have a problem in your life, not me. Because I'm playing my role. Really. And I know I have issues. A lot of them. So if I have to apologize to you, if you can, even if it's for the same gender, I will apologize to you. Oh, I would like it shouldn't be like that. You have a deepest problem in your own. Because a relationship is about that. Imagine that God tells you today, I won't forgive you no more because you are continually praying the same prayer. A little bit prays of your hand. Because many of you, as me, there is, there is forgiveness, asking for forgiveness that we are doing this for ages. Months, days, weeks. That you continue saying, I'm sorry, Father, I'm sorry, Father. Now imagine that God say, I don't know, I'm not sorry for you now. Forget about it. Now you do. All the time the same stories. All the time I seek forgiveness for the same stuff. I won't forgive you now. But God, 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 God doesn't. You know why? Because Jesus went to the cross of the hell. And he's merciful forever. And then he can't go against his nation. You know, the Bible says that mercies of the Lord, every dawn, they get renewed. So in other words, every morning you say, hey, another, another extension of mercy upon mercy. And then you finish it up. And you have to grab it. And you have to hold it with both hands and say, if I have this mercy, that's why it's important to pray in the dawn. That's why it's important to you to put your knees in, the, in your ground in the dawn. But I, live, I, I share my room with people. What does that mean? Because you can put your knees and just say, thank you for this mercy. Opportunity, forgive me. I'm a mess. I really need you in my life. Mm-hmm. I really need you to boost me. I really need you to overcome one more day, clean and out of drugs, out of addictions. Can you help me I, in this and other area? Can you that you only know me and I only know you? Did Jesus love us already before we loved him? Of course, that's why many people say, no, since I know Jesus, since I came to the Lord, since I came to the man, you never came to the man. God found a way to fill you this place. You never came to the Lord. The Bible says that He loves us first. So, in other words, He loves us in, in a way that we, st- we were still struggling in our sea, rolling over in the middle of the sea. And 2,021 years ago, He died on the cross of the Calvary for you. Knowing that you will be doing what you did, I will be doing what I did. And knowing that for many of us, we will never repent. Yet he loved those people too. Yes. When I used to evangelize, I used to say to the people, you know, for God to finish the evilness in mankind, what he has to do? He will start by a woman finishing with He will go to say, you know what? The God, God to finish with evilness in mankind has to start to kill me and ends up to kill all in the end of all, all of them. I used to say, be mad. But in those days was the peak of evilness, the highest terrorist of all in those days. So I used to say, you have to start by me and I have to finish in being mad. To say what? To say that I will be, I will be mad, both of us, for God, we are the same. Sinners. Oh, but we did worse things according with our laws, according with our understanding, according with our body. Oh. For God's sin is sin. We are the ones that like to live. That's why I explained to you in one of the Bible studies that God gave how many commandments to Moses? Huh? Ten commandments. Out of those, it became 633 commandments. Imagine this. God knows everything, hates everything. A, a commandment for everything. You shall not eat, you shall not this, you shall. We need to be a lot of commandments. Why? Because the law, we need law, we need law, we need law. And if we only know how to live by the law, we are not able to live by grace. And people that live by the law normally they live by the fear. And fear will show you that you live by the law and you are not living by grace. A person that lives by grace does not have fear because fear will be revealed by grace. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians that we read, by grace you were you are saved. And not for you to and, and not and, and, and not for the things you do. For nobody to boast. Did we treat Jesus nice before we accepted him as our Savior and Lord? As Master, did we treat him nice? For some of us, we didn't even want to know about him. I was one of those. We didn't want to know. For us, Jesus, we remember about Jesus in the Christmas. That's why I say many times, 
For many people in the mankind, they do like this subject of the baby Jesus. The baby Jesus in the bed, there, how do you call that place that you put it in? Huh? What is it? No, the, 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 the donkey and the cow all together. So it's, it's a stable. You like that. So for many, Jesus, it's nice to stay on there, baby Jesus, but there's no longer a powerful Jesus, a powerful God. It's a baby Jesus. So then we went, oh yeah, Jesus, and it becomes like a fairy tale, like a fairy tale or like a history, or part of a story. It's no longer the way it was as that we should be. That's why the question is, did we treat Jesus nice before we said that he was Savior and Lord and Master? Did Jesus pay a heavy price for his bride? Who is his bride? Huh? You and me, the church. Did he pay a, a, a higher, a heavy price? Yeah, he paid the price of death and death in the cross of the Calvary. Is Jesus waiting to marry his bride until she will be without any blemish, woman, spirit, or sin? Huh? Is he? Is he? Jesus makes us all and cleans us by washing us with God's word. Is this the truth? Yes. Do we men have to sanctify and clean our lives also with God's word? Yes. As we read and explain the Bible to our wives, will that also cleanse us? Yes or no? Yes. Will God approve if we walk away from wives that do not honor and obey God's steps? No. So how, how can I do this, Pastor? We pray for them, we preach to them, we fast. The same applies to our children. We pray, we fast, we, we dedicate time to God. Are husbands and wives not equally many sinners who need a savior? Huh? We are equally sinners that need a savior. Are you and me willing to try to make the absolute best of our marriages or of a future marriage by asking our wife to forgive us and to forgive her whatever she asks for that or not? See? Whatever she asks for that or not. Because the question of forgiveness is something is a subject that God has been working in my life too much. Not to give her a last forgiveness, but to give me a high understanding of forgiveness. Because in fact, in my case, I don't see myself too difficult of coming to a pastor and cross a pastor and say, look here, forgive me. I don't find myself difficult in that. But why why there is these two subjects that I've been forced? Go relationship between you and God, relationship between a man and a woman, the marriage, why? Because also applies to your relationship with your brother or your sister. If we are not able to fellowship with each other in a nice way, quick to forgive, quick to apologize, and so and so, we will not be able to have a good relationship with God. The Bible says so. If we are not able to relate with each other, that we see each other, that we look at with each other, how can we go to relate with God that we cannot see? Because there is only one way to me, for me to know even or me or him. What, what does that mean? Huh? Reading the Bible and not the Bible, what the Bible works in my life, how it works in my life. The Bible is like that? Mirror. So if the Bible shows me, will show you and will help me to have mercy on you, but you also, doesn't matter if I'm a pastor or a deacon or a pastor or a bishop, you will also look at me and because you read the Bible and you see yourself in the mirror of the Bible, you will see a condition or misery, you will see that you, you are like. Lack of holiness also. So when you look at me, even no matter who I am or what I or function I have in the church, will say, Yeah, I also have mercy for him because as me, he also needs Jesus in his life. He also needs salvation in his life. And this is the way it works. And this is when people ask, Oh, but what why you have so many mercies? Why do you forgive? Why do you give opportunities? People already ask me here in the ministry for a long while, but nobody asked me here. Already asked me, why are you so many opportunities? Why you forgive so freely? Why you start pushing the people again? With, with the, why? Because it's God's plan. God's plan is not for us to be just smashing the person until the person is completely broken and destroyed. God's plan is to lift up the, the person. Yes. Are you willing to try to make the absolute best of your marriage? 
The Old Testament, God compares his people, Israel, often to be his wife. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 20, for example. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 20 to 23. Surely, as a wife treacherously departs from her husband, so have you dwelt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, said the Lord. A voice was heard on the desolate heights, weeping in supplications of the children of Israel. They have perverted their way. They have forgotten, forgotten the, Lord, the, the Lord their God. Return you back, slain children, and I will heal you from the consequences of your backsliding. Indeed, we come to you because you are the Lord our God. Truly, salvation is hoped for in vain from the hills. Where we serve false gods, and from many mountains tops, truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. Questions to discuss. Do you notice that God sees Israel as a wife, but also his children? What does this, what does this say? God looks at you and me as a family. And sometimes we look at God in a very distant way. It looks like God is far away. God will never forgive me. God will never hear my prayer. I don't know, God hears the prayer of a Philip, of Pastor Juan, or Stanley, or, or Arif. Those people that in our understanding, it looks like that they are better than us. So God hears the prayer of them, not my prayer. God is, you know why? Because for many cases, and especially for us that we came from this world of rats and alcohol and so and so, we came also, many of us, or 99.9% of us, we came from broken homes. Homes where or the mother was there or in the father wasn't, or the father was and the mother wasn't, or both of them were there, but they were a mess as a mother and as a father. Or divorces, for example. One of the, one of the problems of the divorces is the selfishness of the, of the two of the parents, right? Because if they do have children in common, when they divorce, they are being selfish because they are not thinking about their children. So, I don't like psychology, but the truth is that psychologists, they study the behavior of the children, and 99% of the children that go through the process of the divorce of a mother or a father, what they, what they discover is that they always put their guilty on themselves. They always say to themselves that they divorce because of me, because I am a problem. That's why people, they should be divorced. Or it's a commitment, or it's not a commitment. Please. Will our God also do for us what God promised to Israel? Is our God do not put uh, uh, is our God and not the God of all mankind? Are God willing to do the promises that are being made, for example, to the people of Israel? Is He willing to do yes or no? Yes. Huh? Yes. Hallelujah. <coughs> Everybody is asleep or not? <laughs> Just like an earthly father has a wife, so Jesus wants to be married to us. He is whoever waiting for us to become clean, free, and of any blemishes. And that will happen in the day of the resurrection. We read in Revelation chapter 19, verse 1 to 10, of these events in heaven after the great harlot city Babylon has fallen. Revelation 19, 1 to 10. After these things, I heard the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia! Salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. True and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Again they said, Alleluia! The smoke of the harlot city rises up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell and worshipped God, who sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia! Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all his servants, and those who fear him. 
both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, the sound of many waters, and as the sound of the mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, because the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready, and she was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is righteous acts of the saints. Then the person said to me, Right, right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper on the land, of the land. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. And I fell as if, and I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. 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 I like that. And I heard the voice of many. John had the privilege to have a vision, a hell of a vision, a vision that changed his life. God spared John in the, in the island for him to have this vision. So, Jesus or God compares us with the wife. And then when we look to the relationship of a man and a woman in a marriage, wife and husband, if we understand clearly what God wants from the wife and from the husband, you will understand what God is expecting from the church and what the church is, is expecting from God because our expectations must be in God and any other thing. So then we expect from each other something, but the, the role of the church, more than sit and hear preaching, the, whole, the role of the church is to fulfill the plan of God, is to sanctify it, to be holy, is to live a life of sanctification, a life of dedication to God. As much as you dedicate to God, God will be dedicated to you. God, in order to use you, you must dedicate yourself to Him. Oh, but how can I dedicate? I, I think I dedicate myself to that. There is a problem many times. We think that it's the hard work we do that's a dedication to the Lord. It is the, work, the hard work we do if we do it with the right heart. If we do it with the wrong heart, the, the work is just work and anybody can do it. Because many institutions and geos, they have no God, they don't preach any God, and they do it eventually a very good job. And they help many people and so on and so on. So it's not the hard work, but it's the, uh, the way our heart is when we block the hard work. More questions to discuss. Could the great adult city Babylon mention here be the European and American cultures in their sexual permiss permissiveness of today? Let me repeat the question. Could the great Arab city Babylon mentioned here by the, the here be the European and American cultures in their sexual permissiveness of today? If you think that you, see, you saw everything about, about sin, you must go to America or to Europe. You will meet many good things. Could it that be that the big cities in Africa are following these cultures rapidly? Yes or no? Yes. yes. I always say, the African culture wants to reject everything of the Western and European culture. You can find the African, the proper African, saying, no, the white man came with this, came with that. And they reject everything that the white man brings. But eventually, they do reject everything that is good that the white man brings, like, for example, Jesus Christ. Many say that is a white man is weak. And so we should continue following our ancestors and so on. But at the end of the day, we should follow Jesus and not our ancestors. But then we embrace cultures like this that we are speaking of. For example, now the great four, and I know that because the, the director of the school of believers, it's, it's a pastor. The school is from him and for, it's for him and for the wife. They are fighting with the Minister of Education and many other schools. Why? Because they want to implement in the schools what? Masturbation. To teach your kids in the grade four how to masturbate yourself. Yeah. In Europe, you go to many European countries, only you have to that. And Portugal is one of them. You can't call a child boy or girl. Why? Because the child still must decide 
or choose what you want to do. <laughs> but guess what? Yes, it's true. Rapidly, the Africa, Africa is embracing this, this subject and saying, yeah, because for many, development is that. Yet that's not the development. So God allows all this. Why? Pastor, because of Jesus Christ, because he went to the cross of the country. So eventually God he, he just allowed this to happen because he said, I can do nothing. Why? Because I already sent Jesus to die. Otherwise it doesn't make any sense. If I come with my wrath, with my anger, with, with my punishment now, it won't make any sense that Jesus went and died in the cross of the Calvary. So God holds the situation waiting for what? Huh? Waiting for what? For you and for me to wake up and to start preaching the gospel. Instead of smoking in the corner that's hidden. Instead of doing things in the corner that's hidden that you think that nobody sees but God sees. You understand? Instead of playing church and then we, we, we play, we honor God with our mouth, but we dishonor people with our mouth at the same time. Servants of God, pastors, leaders, responsible, so and so, brothers that sit next to us. We are able to hang each other and then we waste time, we, we waste time with each other. And we waste time with stories that we should waste time. Instead of wasting time or, or getting our time and saying, let me preach. Let me preach, let me announce. Let me speak to the nations that God does exist. Let me dedicate my time to study the word of God in order for me to be a teacher also. But we, are, we waste time and then as I said many times, the time is ticking and is our worst enemy of all. Time. Ticking all the time. I'm going to celebrate in the 21st now, 42 years old. I can't even believe it. I can't I can, I can believe on this. I jump in the trampoline these days, I stay in three days without moving my bed. When I was the age of my son, Elias, nine years old, I could jump three days in the trampoline, I will never feel nothing. And you look like the same. And then and the age is moving, and we are, the, we are seeing the age is moving, we are moving. We can't, we can't go back on what we did. Two brothers that they go to Mozambique tomorrow to do something, they, they, they just can't be back here to, to do, the, to go back and no, because I want to, the, I didn't like the, the way I went in the bus. I need another opportunity. I need to go back and go in the bus again. We can do that from the forget it. You go one shot, you don't enjoy that one, you won't enjoy another one. I'm sorry, that one you won't enjoy. You can enjoy another one, but that's not going back. That's always going moving forward. That's always getting older. That's always your time is ticking. And then that's why many of us will lose time. And then we give too much value to this precise time. We give too much value to this time that we live now. It seems like that is very important because we don't know if you want to die. Let me tell you something. You will die. It's not that we don't know when we're going to die. We, we pretend it looks like that we are pretending that we're not going to die. We will die. Sooner than we think. Oh, Pastor, it means that I'm going to die tomorrow. No. Sooner than we think. Because our, our, our lifetime on earth, compared with the eternal life, is nothing. So it's sooner than you think. Because the time is passing. And many of us already, or many of you already, you know exactly what I'm saying. That we were looking at you before the hours of my 20, starting my journey of youth. Yes. It looks like that life will never end. It's look, it looks like that. I have the whole time in the world. Do you feel that? Tiago must feel that for sure. That is for sure that he feels that. I have the whole time in the world. Oh, I still have a, a life ahead of me. Who told you? <laughs> short, short. If you don't get your time, if you don't use your time properly. And that's why all oh, pastors say, or any believer, or whatever tells you that you need to stay here for a year, two, three. Recovery. Oh, that is the worst of my time. No, the rest of your time is going to go back. You start using again and then you come back. And then you walk to your watch. Guess what? 2053 over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 70. When I am, you remind. Where? In first place. Oh. <laughs> how many we how many we know who? They are not 70, but how many we know who? Uh, with 60, 65, they came to Liman with what? With, on, on his 20, several rows. They came to Liman on his 20, but they spent the entire life. They, they sit in the park, first place, 
everybody knows them. How old are you now? I'm 60. <laughs> you were a young man. You were young. Could this lead to children growing up without the needed family structure? Thus creating next generation of children becoming adults with bitterness towards those who failed raising them in a loving environment. What's the biggest problem in Africa? Poverty? Huh? No. What's the biggest problem in Africa? Dunderness? Does Africa, African people are done by the European people? Is that it? No. At all. Do we have the same level of intelligence? Yes or no? Yes. Can we do the same thing? Yes. So what is the problem? Most of the children grow without a father. Most of the children grow without a father and only eventually without a mother. But most of them, they grow without a father. Many children, they even grow with a father, but they know that the father has another family around, so they know are not unique. And children, they need the sense of uniqueness. They need to understand that they are unique. Rebecca knows that she's unique on her own way, or she must understand that she's unique. Oh, but you have five kids. How are they going to know? Because I'm the only father, and they are my only friends. So they will understand that each one of them, they are unique. So when, when, a, when a family grows without one of the parents, especially the father, then it's a problem because the mothers normally, they, they, they want to be in a family, they, they are more family people than men. So that's why it's a problem. And maybe many of you are thinking now in this way, yeah, the fact is that I grew up, I didn't grow up without the father. Or my father was there, but it wasn't there. But he was. But he wasn't that much there. Because there was all these other things. And a woman, divorces, and so on and so forth. And then what that creates in the child? No structure. Why, why do they believe in attacking the, the sexual area of the mankind so much? Why? Because of that. Because the, the family is a structure in the marriage. That's why I already married two couples here. And in the both marriages, as I said, this is more than a union of two people. This is a family, the beginning of a family, the beginning of a generation, the responsibility of generating a next generation that is a bit better than us. Because who do we want to be? Who do we want to go? Will these generations do the same, do the same for bad things for which they judge their elders? Eventually. It will not stop, the mankind will not stop. And if you and me don't rise up as Christians to teach the good ways, that guess what? For the days of today, it's old school, isn't it? Marriage, virgin, one wife, that's old school, that's old fashioned. Wait for the marriage. Waiting for the marriage. No, that's old school. That's that's when a woman sees and when a man sees if you are able to hold on and you are able to be loyal and faithful when you are married. If you can't hold on, if you behave like animals, even then when you are married, eventually many won't hold on when they are married. The pressure, the steam. Could this lead to misery and rage deep within and lead after that without repentance to a similar life in eternal hell? Yes. The first sex act binds a woman to a man. Do you know that when she later marries another man than her first lover, she will always think of that first one that, you, you, that she met? And this is why the devil is attacking the mankind with the sex, with the, with, with the perversion, with the, uh, allowing the homosexuality, homosexuality, homosexuality Homosexuality. Yeah, homosexuality to be like normal. It's normal. Why? Because of that. Because he knows if he attacks that area, he will attack that with the beginning of the family. So we as Christians, we have a high responsibility of building our families right. For a mother with children, 
Suddenly, if he has a husband, that is giving to their children a father. We have a situation in the Middle East that is about to happen us. The mother is going to give a father to his children. He's more than a father. He's bringing balance, stability. He's bringing home. Home is not a house. Home is a retirement home. It's a place where you abide with your wife and with your children. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train a child in the way he should go, so when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train a child in the way he should go, so when he is old, he will not depart from it. Children, they do not carry the father's name without a good <coughs> It is he whom his sons will look that to and imitate. And it is he, it is he on whom his daughters will practice and prove their family ability. The, the, the boys, they all, all they all look to the father as a figure of authority, a figure of power, a figure of safetyness, and the girls they always look to the father. Actually, the, the girls are the ones that look to the father as a figure of safety. That's why I say many times, I, I prefer to be me. Now when Rebecca is five years old and the sweetheart is always saying, you are beautiful, you are beautiful, you are beautiful, you are beautiful. And she comes every morning, every morning without her. Then I will look. I don't say, leave me alone, Rebecca. I don't know Rebecca, stop it. I say, you look beautiful, you look this, you look that. <clears throat> why? Why? Because I'm making sure that tomorrow she's 17 or 16, and if somebody comes and does to her knee that she's beautiful, that won't affect her emotions because she knows for a fact that she's beautiful because I already planted that in her heart. So she doesn't need to hear from nobody because she spends her life hearing from me, the first man that appears in her life. So then it will be easy for her to look to a man without the need of hearing stuff without the need of the man to lie to her ears because, and again, the father has to be there. If the father is not there to nourish that, for example, then the girl will grow up and when achieve a certain time and starts struggling with herself, she found the need to hear from another people. And then any man can come, eventually the same age, but can come and say, ah, I lost a little bit of and they go down the train. Why they go? Because they need to hear something that eventually they should hear from their father. Now, comparing the Father with God, what we are hearing from God? What are you hearing from God? Because when you speak about mom, dad, this and that, you speak about the two kinds of family. In this case, we speak about 